All right, James Harnsberger here and Wealth by Design. Let's get right in it and dig in it and let's get it done. So what I wanna start with today on this segment is sort of the challenges, right? Have you ever had a day where you get up and you think, oh shit, I gotta, I got, you know, I gotta do all this stuff and, and you know, I, this money thing is just, my finances are, you know, they just suck and, and I don't wanna do this. Uh, and, and then we get into this routine where it's like, then we get up and do it again the next day and every day. And then pretty soon it's like every day you get up, it, it's like a sucky day, right? The reason I think that that happens, at least my experience is we've created this new pattern and, and what I call it is the pattern of pain and tolerance. Um, we're testing how much pain financially we can endure. Um, and, 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 and seeing where the new limit is, right? Instead of changing the design of our financial life, uh, we set it up so that we can uh, somewhat masochistically uh, undertake the process of finding out how much pain financially we can endure. Uh, and I can tell you, when that shit blows up, uh, that's when you can't take any more because the shit blows up. Uh, so we're gonna talk about a little bit about uh, challenges. And uh, uh, we've got Teen and Melissa Howard, and, and we're going to do this next segment. What I want to get into right now and dig into this is, is those challenges, right? They're different for everybody. Yep. And they were different for me back in the day. They're different for you. They're different for everybody watching. But they do have some things that I think are in common that we, that we all experience uh, by varying degrees. Uh, Tell me a little bit, uh, Melissa, start with you. Tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that before you even came in, even to, uh, as a client or maybe as, as part of the focus group, tell me some of those challenges that felt like you were on that loop that you were going through every day financially that were just like, shit, not again, right? Mm -hmm. You had one of those days where it's shit, not again, right? Yeah, yeah. Um I just I just came to a point where you notice you're you're just you're living this loop of doing the same thing over and over again and nothing changing and feeling frustrated and doing it over again and nothing changing and it's like the definition of insanity right right and I felt like that's where I was coming to it's like wait a second I make I I bring in how much money every year you know like wait mm -hmm. I did it again I brought in that much again like. What's wrong with this picture? Where did it go? Yeah. yeah. I mean, why am I, you know, <laughs> this is like, I should, I could have owned how many houses by now? I mean, you just, it, I just had a, a, a moment of a total shock yeah. and awe. Yeah. And I think that doing these exercises and I just got sick of myself. I, I just got tired of, of the situation. Yeah. Like yeah. I got tired of the same conversation with him. Right. I'm like, I do you know how many times I've heard you say this? I'm so sick of you saying this. Right. And it, you poor thing. Like right. I, I've just had this wall, like, you know, right, and it's, right. um, the stick in the head moment. Yeah. Right. Time to do something different. Like right. this is old. Right. Real old. Mm -hmm. Like gross. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about you team? Um, talk is cheap. Action. <laughs> Action. I mean, so, uh, you know, for, for me, the hard, the, the hurdles were actually doing something about it. <laughs> so, and oftentimes mm -hmm. isn't part of the challenge what to do. Well, yeah. yeah. And then we get stuck deciding yes. and not doing. Yeah. But see that there's, therein lies a problem when, for instance, like we were talking about when you have a problem and you go to a specific person for a specific reason they do that one specific thing. Right. Well, you still have X amount of other problems that you're dealing with that have stemmed from that. Right. So now you're trying to figure out how to fix this Which problem. Which problem takes priority. This pro yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Because they all compound. Right. To be able to learn it and actually do Practice it, it. That, that, that really solves the problem for me. That's how I work. I need to actually do it and see it works right. and then. You know, because if I give it to someone else to do and they just do it and I don't see how it's done, You're I'm going to end it. up yeah. most of the time doing the same thing because that's what I like to do. Yeah, I'm a masochist, sticks. right. Yeah. So. so, and on that point, that's a very good point because that, that leads into my next point. 
in terms of what I discovered, not only for myself, because I went through this shit way back in the day. And when I finally came out of that on the other side financially, uh, I, I made a lot of different choices. I think some of them were fundamental. And then I got this concept in my head that, you know, certain things financially were not going to be negotiable. In mm -hmm. other words, uh, I was not going to live day to day, week to week, month to month. Uh, without uh, telling my money where to go. Uh, that was, however I had to do it, I'd do whatever it takes because that was not negotiable because that was part of my challenge. Just commission check to commission check back in the day when I was you know, doing other things before I got into the tax industry. So what I've discovered in working uh, with folks, uh, whether they're clients or not clients, I, I, we work with a lot of people. Uh, what I discovered is Step one is like, where do you start? Where do you begin, right? Mm -hmm. And what I discovered, and, and I'll get both of your feedback on this, what I discovered was the most effective way is what I call the stop moment, okay? Stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop. Don't do anything. Just stop. And if you can just stop, and the next step is very carefully planned, that you do the assessment and ask a different question. Mm -hmm. And the question is, where am I, where are we financially today? Because mm -hmm. that was the process. Melissa, why don't you tell us your, the challenges and tell us what, what your insight or what your takeaway was going through that process the stop moment and yeah. take the assessment? Um, well, I can be a bit stubborn and it's been a challenge for me creating that habit of stopping. And consequently, I'm, I practice that all the time in, in yoga and stuff. Like I teach and instruct and stuff and it's all about stopping and for that moment and being present and mindful in what you're doing in that moment. Right. And sometimes that is the most critical moment because you go off on the old pattern and you're going off on a tailspin. You get sucked in. Yeah, you get sucked in and then you almost get a, a whatever attitude. Like, right. it's never going to change. Right. I'm not going to, I can't do this or whatever. You know, you, you, right. your reptilian, you know, that brain thing comes right. in and does the fight or flight thing. So, or makes excuses for you. Right, yourself. right. Um, so when you can stop that and, and notice it and then do the other decision choice and that that combination happens, it's like the best thing ever. What was different in terms of asking a different question, where am I financially? Where are we financially? What was different about that? Other than maybe you asked the question. Right. I was able to stop for long enough to notice where I was emotionally, you okay. know, like I'm feeling, I'm not feeling good right now because of a meeting I just had got me annoyed or, you know, I'm actually, this is a great day. It just all depended on where I was in my mindset. Okay. And then I noticed the pattern. It's like, oh, well, I was getting ready to do A, B, and C, but now I'm doing X, Y, Z instead, right. which is a better outcome for me right. and my family right. because I had the wherewithal to, or the the new habit to stop. Okay. okay. And the way I started doing that was by I actually put a timer on. Okay. And to make me stop, you know? You gave yourself a limit and a, mm -hmm. and, and a, and a pattern to follow to do that. Yeah. And then you did that. Mm -hmm. All right. That's awesome. Teen, how about you? What was different for you? in that process of stop and then ask a different question, where am I, where are we financially? Well, I think um, anytime you stop and you think about what you're going to do, it's a good thing. Okay. Because it gives you time to reset. It gives you time to actually think about the actual outcome. And so I think financially, I'm asking a different question I, I, you know, I don't even think I was asking a question. Okay. So to stop and even ask a question financially. May have been different. That in there is the key because once you ask that question, 
it becomes you, you see that different outcome and then you're like, I want more of that. So I'm going to keep asking those questions because mm. for one, it's like auto pay. If, if they're just going to keep taking it, right. I, I can't ask questions about the money that's already gone. So right. I have to start controlling it more. Right. So, so my three favorite questions in that process, if you recall, because that came out of uh, not only the focus group, but what we incorporated in the program was... Who are you financially? Mm -hmm. Who am I financially? Where am I financially? Right? Mm -hmm. And how do I choose to live financially? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. What was what was different about those three questions? Well, they would have been, <clears throat> I think, a lot different if I hadn't done a lot of these steps. Now, when I ask that question, it's pretty similar. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, it, there's not there's not a not big, a big difference variance. Just because they're all kind of they all blend into one. Because where I want to be is where I want to be, and if I don't take those steps in following that, then I'm doing something opposite. Then would it be safe to say that <clears throat> just the awareness that the question has more impact might be measured differently? Sure. Yes. Okay. Very How much about so. for you, Melissa? That's how I feel. I okay. feel like I I chose to learn something okay. different. You know, you can't just sit back and not do the work and just feel like, oh, right. I'm going to choose a different design today. Okay, great. Yeah, that's like doing yoga, right? You, yeah. You, you're the master yoga instructor, right? That would be like me saying, okay, okay so uh, just give me the book and, and tell me what to do, and then I go figure it out, right? Right, right. That, that's... Takes practice. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I'm not doing that, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's not easy. It's I not, mean, it sucks. No, yoga. I mean, there's moments I, where I tried it once and wow. Yeah, I mean, there's moments where I'm just angry. Yeah. You know, Tough. like let's just be Tough. real. I, I lift weights, right? Yeah, yeah that's when the sculpt comes in. <laughs> so, so for a lot of people, and, and and here's the other thing, and and I don't want to put a lot of emphasis on it, but it does have some bearing. Um, what I noticed at least in my practice, and I noticed working with, with clients and people that are not even clients, one thing that I paid attention to was that there was a varying uh, impact that you could measure depending on what generational group they were in, right? For example, I noticed that the approach with uh, the millennial generation is radically different oh, yeah. than Gen X or Gen Y mm -hmm. or maybe... Uh, the boomer generation, my generation, right? Um, but I think generational things influence based on our experiences of, of what we what we experienced during the time that we lived through all of those years, right? But we now are in a, a way, move, have completely, almost totally moved away from mass society now to a networked society. And I think the implications, as good as you know, the internet and, and technology and advancements are, I think the downside is it, I see it more as promoting more disengagement, oh, yeah. not less, right? Totally. So my concern for future generations, millennials and beyond, are that if you don't even have the basics. Exactly. It's like your kids, right? Mm. I mean, how do you see something like that in terms of, rearing your children where that would be different in terms of the money management lessons, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. I mean, because it, what you're saying is, I mean, you have these different classes of people, but no matter what class they're in, they still want the same thing. They still they want, want to the be same financially thing. set. And right. I mean, nobody wants to sit there and be, I want to be poor. So, you know, I mean, you, no matter what generation you're from, you still have to understand how money works. And if you don't, and you don't... Then it doesn't not, work. And then it doesn't work. So, I mean, you can do yeah. all these little things that, you know, that these millennials are trying to do. Or, right. For me, it's like I didn't get it back when I was younger. Right. And now I'm just getting it now in my 50s. Right. Well, holy moly, um, I better hurry up. Right. And, I mean, I'm not... It's just the reality. It's like so yeah, we all had an expiration date. Well, if you right. learn it early, why not learn it early? If if I if I had these opportunities when I was 
in my teens. Right. And my parents are like, hey, instead of piano lessons, you're going to this wealth management. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> That's the gift. Yeah. Because, I mean, now the first thing I wanted to do was tell our son about this and, yeah. and get him to understand. But it's harder because it's not this or online. It's you actually have yeah, to engage. I agree. I think there is a purpose to it, though. I mean, money is money. Right. So Money doesn't care. It doesn't care. It really doesn't. And money goes where it's going to be treated best. If you ignore it and mistreat it, it's going to go away and you exactly. won't have it. Exactly. Right? That's the way I look at mm -hmm. it, right? One of my great, and you reminded me of one of my greatest books that's on my reading list. I actually, one year, I think Susan can, can, can remember when we did this, we bought like two cases of these books and just started sending them out to people, right? I put my little note in there and okay. personal sign note and, you know, uh, and that was the, the the richest man in Babylon. Right. Right. Yeah. And I, I we bought like two cases of these books and sent them out to people. That's right? awesome. And even today, um, I still, well, once in a while, I'll go pull that book and, and my, because when I got this concept years ago and, and, and discovered and this will lead to my next question. Making money wasn't what it was about. I thought it was about making money. And I and I discovered that 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 part was not what it was. First, I discovered it's the easiest thing to do is make money. You know, the challenge is really the keeping part of the making right. of the money. Right. Exactly. Because we don't teach that. And that book was so great. And the lessons that my mentor back in the day gave and shared with me was the principle of accumulation, right? right? The principle of accumulation. You take, uh, and I use the gold coin uh, example, you have one gold coin and in and, and practicing the, the accumulation technique, uh, you would add to that which you already have another gold coin, mm -hmm. right? And accumulate. And... We get so stuck in spending money and auto pay that we don't set up an auto keep system where we're keeping and paying ourselves first, right? And accumulating, like you pointed out, you look at how much you made each year, it's going up and, and, and you make more money and have less. Right. And it's like, how the shit does that happen, exactly. right? So challenges. Um, as you started working with some of the, the, the little techniques and the little exercises, uh, Melissa, what, what, what was the aha moment for you? That, and, and what was it about that aha moment that, that something shifted for you? Something had to shift because you took the step towards starting the business, which was no longer an idea, you actually did something now you're doing not deciding mm -hmm. right and something shifted enough <laughs> that you tapped into what you've had all along and that's your confidence to do that right mm -hmm. well, can you think about what it was i think it was belief in myself okay um you know a lot of things that i've been doing to be able to feel confident enough to say i can open up my own studio and have the ability to own this and be confident to say, yes, I do have, you know, seven certifications that enable me to be in the spot now. And that matter. Uh, yeah, and I've worked, I did that. Right. And that's one of my things within myself is, is the belief in myself. Like mm -hmm. I have confidence, but sometimes the belief doesn't match. Oh, I agree. Two different things. <laughs> totally yeah, two I different totally things. Agree. I go walk in a room and be the most confident person, but yeah. then it's like, am I really believing in that? You know, right. like there's, there's a thing, you know? So, um, I think I had that. I think they met each other, the belief and the confidence. Okay. Um, and I, I like think that. that was the aha moment yeah. for me. And, and, and the important part of that is what you're describing is congruence. Congruence. Right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your beliefs are aligned with your confidence right. and your actions. Yes. And you have developed the ability to be congruent. It was like I was in alignment. When yeah. you feel that alignment that you're doing what you should be doing. Right. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. Instead of trudging along and just doing what I think I have to do. And, 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 and that know? is so true because, and it's like I tell people, you, you, you can teach people to do a lot of things. You can't teach somebody to be confident, mm -mm. but you can experience being confident and you know it when you feel it, right? Mm -hmm. Team, what was that moment or shift for you? I think it's been kind of a long time coming. Um, so it's kind of been a gradual shift. Okay. I think I've been trying to shift. It's just putting 
the motions into actual movement okay. doing it. So I'm um, looking at my age, looking at our account, going, wow, we make good money and where is it going? And I, I guess just the, the it, it came to me when I just could not figure out. I think it was probably in when we were doing worksheets and, you know, I had uh, my a sheet next to me. This is what I had marked that what we spend a month right. and then what i actually saw was was like probably a couple thousand dollars difference very different and that there was the moment of clarity of like okay well this is this is the purpose because we're not really paying attention to what's going on the moment we pay attention and we start putting more effort into that we're going to get more out of it so. and it really wasn't a lot of time was it I mean, no. it was just a little bit of time. It was a little bit of time. Over. Yeah. But I mean, it, 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 I knew something was, I knew something was wrong. Right. I just, just didn't choose to really, you know, put that in as a, a real part, part of our life. And again, going back to the process. So, so you took, you stopped, you took a step forward, ask a different question. Where am I financially? Bingo. Right. And actually sat down and tried to, and, and actually figured out this is where I'm at. Bingo. And I'm off by a couple of grand. Yeah. A month. Yeah. Okay. Well, over, I don't know, 10 years, right? Um, thousand dollars That's some real cash. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so the, I, I think the contributors are pretty common. And the outcomes are pretty common. What mm -hmm. makes it different is the person mm -hmm. and the commitment, mm -hmm. right? And so, so it's for me, I thought that the most important thing that I ever heard, and then I'll share a little experience, was that you know you can decide the kind of financial you, life that you want every day, and and whatever you do that day is going to decide whether you you're, you're going to do that or not. When when I got asked the question back in the day about something um, that I wanted and, and, and then the person asked me, um, well, why don't you have that if that's what you want? I didn't have a good answer, right? right? So, for example, well, I'd like to have, you know, this kind of income, and I'd like to have this kind of house, and I'd like to have this kind of this. And then the person just simply, well, what, why don't you have that? Right. That was my aha moment. That was the stick in the sure. head to like wake up, right? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have an answer. I didn't even have a good answer, let alone a bullshit answer, mm -hmm. right? I didn't have any answer, right? So, so for the challenges that you've gone through, I don't really even, maybe using the word challenges, not the best word, maybe just the experience that you've gone through to be where you're at today. What, what is, what is different today? That's a big thing that sticks out. That's different. Maybe not even a challenge, but just very different about what you're doing today. That is different than what you did before. Just one thing that's different. Um, literally doing, doing the same thing, but differently. Okay. Just doing something totally differently because once again, like you said, you know, it, we're doing what we're doing isn't wrong. It's just we're not doing we've been doing it this same way for so long. Give me kind of an example. Is it? Um, well, for instance, taking money and saying, OK, well, this is we're going to start with this. Then the rest are for the bills and all okay. that. And then actually putting money into different places and watching them grow okay. instead of waiting for it to happen. But you actually have to do it. It's right. not going to just jump in this account and do itself. Right. We're now making a conscious effort to, to do that. So you've actually accumulated like savings Correct. and you've actually got those yes. things in place and working yes. toward not everything, but yes, we did. We did end up saving money. Which okay. Has been great. All right. And so that, that bit of savings of money, is now we're learning how to go, okay, wow, this is, we can do it. So now we're planning on doing other little things. All right. You know, so. All right, let me ask a different question. In terms of going forward, 
and just spend a few minutes on this before we wrap up. I look at this sort of like every day of, of, of my life or anybody's life is like a journey. You know, I, I'm happy that I can wake up because I won, I'm alive, right? So Amen. I won the game at least there, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm already ahead, right? <laughs> and then in terms of, in terms of direction, um, and where I'm going with this is, is a journey of a lifetime in a journey financially, man, it has a whole bunch of stuff that we can't predict. Mm -hmm. This COVID thing that shut down the whole country and 70% of the people that had jobs and all, you know, every, we've all been businesses that have just failed overnight, right? Mm. This, this It's going to take years for this shit to settle out, right? And it's caused a lot of disruption. So what are you doing, both of you, individually and collectively, and we'll start with Teen, what are you doing differently in terms of your financial journey that maybe you didn't do before that's different today? Um, well, thanks to you, and I'm, I'm not trying to be cliche about it, but we have a design. Now, that design is really reminiscent of where we both want to be in our lives. Okay. Okay, so... So we bring it down to a, a real street level, real easy to figure it out. We get a paycheck. We got to figure out this, this, and this, and it's all going to feed back to and work for us to go to that level. So, so something that can feed you in the retirement, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. right. And, okay. and so how we're doing things differently is we're taking our money a hell of a lot seriously. Okay. And we're looking at it as this is a very important aspect of our life because we want this, this, and this, which we should have it. Right. Because we work hard. Yeah, absolutely. And we all deserve no, to be rich. Exactly. Yeah. So there's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is what we okay. are going to achieve. So cool. back way when that's not that was not my my goal was just to pay rent, right. get the bills done. Right. Well, be the hamster. We've been able to accomplish that. And now we're able to think a little bit of ahead right. and start thinking a little bit more. And I think in this case, it, it, we used a uh, like a builder's analogy, but we're going to build a home, and then yes. you can design the home Each how you room. want, right? Yeah. Because you don't. It, it's like it, it's like a project Susan and I are doing, and and it, we may finish it, we may you know sell it and let somebody else finish it. I don't know, but it starts with 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 a drawing, mm -hmm. a concept drawing, and then a set of plans, right? And then the next thing you know, all this shit comes together and you got like a house or a duplex or you right. built something, right? right? That process is really what you're talking about is sure. the design part. Correct. How about for you, Melissa? Because I, I, I suspect for everybody, you know, am I designing a retirement plan? Am I designing, you know, an income stream? Am I designing a multiple income stream? Am I designing Correct. a business? Correct. You know? That's what kind of what we're talking about. For mm -hmm. t tell us a little bit about your side, how that's different. Well, I know that, and this is a cliche, but I know that what personally what I pay attention to definitely grows. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm finding my attention shifting. Okay. You know, like at this stage and age in my life, my wants and needs and dreams and whatever have shifted. You know, okay. I want to have a retirement. I want to be able to, and I don't need a lot. I want a retirement. I want to be able to have a business that we can retire with and pass on to our children, okay. possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so my thought processes are different. Okay. Um, they have to be. In order for me to achieve my core desires, I can't keep doing what I was doing in the right. past because it won't okay. happen. Right. It just will not, no way, no how. So... It's up to me to make those okay. changes. I think that's a big shift. All right. So what we're going to be doing as we wrap up is we're going to be taking sort of the next four to six weeks now. Mm -hmm. And uh, myself and, and our team are going to be now going to a next step with both of you in taking that design now and breaking it down mm -hmm. into a couple of steps. Okay. Mm -hmm. And part of those steps are going to be um, where we're going to set some, let's just say, benchmarks. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be uh, maybe here in 30 days. 
here in 60 days and here in 90 days. And the cool thing about that is you get to decide and design right, right, where right. those points are and what they look like, right? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is describe them and define them. And then what our side is, we're gonna show you how it works to do that, mm -hmm. okay? Again, mentoring is about creating the experience of doing something, right? So you do your part and then the mentor shows you how the other part works, right? Mm -hmm. So so what we would like to do um, is at the 30, at the 60, and at the 90, bring you back into the studio, right? And just check in, starting with what was the design? Right. Where did we want to be in 30, 60, 90, right. right? And then where are we in 30, 60, 90, right? Because you're at the point right now um, having gone through just even even with the um, uh, with the with the focus group, but even going through the, the the program stuff that you're going through right now, you're at the point right now. You're all ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I don't think I need to tell you that you're ready to take another step in what whatever it is that you're doing. Right. I think the biggest challenge, and it's not really a big challenge. I think the biggest thing that's going to be the most important is both of you defining what that's going to look like in terms of uh, of getting to a next point in the next 30, 60, 90 days. So take some time between now and let's say a week from now, we'll check back with you in a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll send you some stuff in, uh, in the email that kind of give you a little bit of guidance. And this is going to relate to your financial life, All right. okay? And these will be things that will be foundational in the sense that they're building. These will be things that you're going to be doing that will build a foundation for a next bigger step. Got it. That if this isn't done, the next bigger step can't happen, can't happen. because yeah. it is, it's exactly. not a solid foundation. Does right. that make sense? It makes perfect sense. All right. Um, as we wrap up, Melissa, uh, take away and, and final thoughts to everybody. Uh, my takeaway is um, that I'm I'm very grateful to be here and to have had an opportunity to meet James. Um, and thanks to Teen, I think you heard a radio ad or something that wasn't that in the beginning how we met James. It wasn't a radio. It was a it was on Yelp. Oh, okay. Yelp. So yeah, back in whatever it was two years ago, whatever how long ago it no, was. was more than that. Um, in our desperation stage, um, I'm just really grateful we are where we are now, and I'm looking forward to improving and um, sharing our successes. Yeah, that's awesome. Teen, how about you? Um, I I wish I did this a lot sooner. So if you're watching this and you're at a younger age, do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do it sooner now. rather than later. <laughs> sooner than later, because totally. a lot less painful. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'm learning this at the age of 51. Hey, I I feel feel young still, but if I could have given this to my <clears> children, <throat> this is a gift to be able to learn a little bit deeper about your financial interests, your anything financially. And, and once you learn that, you know, it becomes a lot easier. So yeah. golden. Yep, that's it. All right, awesome. We'll follow up and get that all started and, and then get your schedule. We'll come back and we'll let everybody follow the progress because I think that's the coolest part of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it's not quite like a reality show, but it's kind of like it's real life, right? Yeah. And shit sure gets is. messy Fly sometimes, up. right? Yeah. All right, that's how we do it. All right, James Harnsberger, Wealth by Design. We'll see you on the next take. Take care. <laughs>